Alleluia. Christ is risen. The Lord is risen indeed. Alleluia. There is one body and one spirit. There is one hope in God's call to us. One Lord, one faith, one baptism. One God and Father of all. Good morning. Welcome to Holy Spirit. I'm Father Jason. I'm the rector here. And today we gather for a special Sunday, the Sunday after All Saints Day. And you'll notice that we're dressed in white. The baptismal font is out. The Christ candle is out. This is a Easter celebration. When we gather to remember all the saints, we gather to remember the people who died in the hope of the resurrection and are still awaiting that resurrection with us. As the song we just sung said, we are all one because we are all Christ's. The church extends to cover both the living and the dead. And one of the things that our funeral service talks about, especially in the Eucharist, is how the Eucharist is a, is a foretaste of the heavenly banquet. That when we come and eat and drink together, we're not just celebrating the mystery of Christ's body and blood with those who are gathered, but the veil between heaven and earth is very thin here. It's, we are sitting and eating with those who have gone before at one table as we anticipate that time when we are all one together after Christ returns. So uh, if we are, uh, as we continue our service of worship, everything that you need for the service is in your bulletin. Uh, for those of you who are watching online, the link in the email did not work, but the link on Facebook and YouTube is working, and I don't know why that is. Um, and uh, so I apologize for that. And if you're worshiping on Facebook, please feel free to use the chat to participate as we go along. We continue our worship on page three with the collect of the day. The Lord be with you. And also with you. Let us pray. Almighty God, you have knit together your elect in one communion and fellowship in the mystical body of your Son, Christ our Lord. Give us grace so to follow your blessed saints in all virtuous and godly living, that we may come to those ineffable joys that you have prepared for those who truly love you. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord, who with you and the Holy Spirit lives and reigns one God in glory everlasting. Amen. Amen. A reading from the Book of Wisdom. The souls of the righteous are in the hand of God, and no torment will ever touch them. In the eyes of the foolish they seem to have died, and their departure was thought to be a disaster, and their going from us to be their destruction, but they are at peace. For though in the sight of others they were punished, their hope is full of immortality. Having been disciplined a little, they will receive great good, because God tested them and found them worthy of himself. Like gold in the furnace, he tried them, and like a sacrificial burnt offering, he accepted them. In the time of their visitation, they will shine forth and will run like sparks through the stubble. They will govern nations and rule over peoples, and the Lord will reign over them forever. Those who trust in him will understand truth, and the faithful will abide with him in love because grace and mercy are upon his holy ones and he watches over his elect. Here ends the lesson. We say together in unison the gradual on page four. The earth is the Lord's and all that is in it the world and all who dwell therein. For it is he who founded it upon the seas and made it firm upon the rivers of the deep. Who can ascend the hill of the Lord and who can stand in his holy place? Those who have clean hands and a pure heart, those who have not pledged themselves to falsehood, nor sworn by what is a fraud. They shall receive a blessing from the Lord and a just reward from the God of their salvation. Such is the generation of those who seek him, 
of those who seek your face, O God of Jacob. Lift up your heads, O gates. Lift them high, O everlasting doors, and the King of glory shall come in. Who is this King of glory? The Lord, strong and mighty. The Lord, mighty in battle. Lift up your heads, O gates. Lift them high, O everlasting doors, and the King of glory shall come in. Who is he, this King of glory? The Lord of hosts, he is the King of glory. A reading from the Revelation of John. I saw a new heaven and a new earth, for the first heaven and the first earth had passed away, and the sea was no more. And I saw the holy city, the new Jerusalem, coming down out of heaven from God, prepared as a bride adorned for her husband. And I heard a loud voice from the throne saying, See, the home of God is among mortals. He will dwell with them. They will be his peoples, and God himself will be with them. He will wipe every tear from their eye. Death will be no more, mourning and crying and pain will be no more, for the first things have passed away. And the one who was seated on the throne said, See, I am making all things new. Also, he said, write this, for these words are trustworthy and true. Then he said to me, it is done. I am the Alpha and the Omega, the beginning and the end. The word of the Lord. me the holy gospel of our lord jesus christ according to john glory to you lord christ when mary came where jesus was and saw him she knelt at his feet and said to him, Lord, if you had been here, my brother would not have died. When Jesus saw her weeping, and the Jews who came with her also weeping, he was greatly disturbed in spirit and deeply moved. He said, Where have you laid him? They said to him, Lord, come and see. Jesus began to weep. So the Jews said, see how he loved him. But some of them said, could not he who opened the eyes of the blind man have kept this man from dying? Then Jesus, again greatly disturbed, came to the tomb. It was a cave, and a stone was lying against it. Jesus said, take away the stone. Martha, the sister of the dead man, said to him, Lord, already there is a stench because he has been dead four days. Jesus said to her, Did I not tell you that if you believed, you would see the glory of God? So they took away the stone. And Jesus looked upward and said, Father, I thank you for having heard me. I knew that you always hear me, but I have said this for the sake of the crowd standing here so that they may believe that you sent me. When he had said this, he cried with a loud voice, Lazarus, come out. The dead man came out, 
his hands and feet bound with strips of cloth, and his face wrapped in a cloth. Jesus said to them, Unbind him and let him go. The Gospel of the Lord. Let us pray. Grant, O Lord, take up these frail and broken words and make them yours, that we might together become and share the good news of your Son. Amen. Would you please be seated? On this uh, Feast of All Saints, I've already mentioned the baptismal font and the Christ candle. Um, A reminder that when we come to the Eucharist, uh, it is part of our practice in the Episcopal Church that we take communion after we have been baptized. We become a part of the family before we sit down at the family meal. So when you come up to receive communion today, feel free to dip your hand in the the baptismal water and make the sign of the cross on yourself or put it on your forehead or whatever as, as a reminder of how we are brought together and what unites us with the fellowship of all the saints who we remember today. We're going to be spending time in John chapter 11, so you can follow along in your bulletin. And I realize that I've stepped away from where the camera can see me well, so I'm stepping back. Um, And we jump right into the middle of John chapter 11, which is a long story about how Jesus hears that Lazarus is sick, how Jesus waits, Uh, and doesn't go immediately after he hears that Lazarus is sick, Um, how he comes and everybody's mad at him for not coming when he heard that Lazarus was sick. And you even hear it in the passage. Could not this person who opened the eyes of the blind man have kept this man from dying? But but Jesus, Jesus has a mission. He is here to set the world to rights, and part of the way he's going to set the world to rights is by overturning the power of death, which is something that he is going to do in his death and resurrection. But in order to continue his work of putting the world to rights, he needs to bring a group of people along who understand and are able to carry things on. So earlier, when the disciples say, well, why aren't we going to Bethany? And he says, for your sake, I am glad that we're not going so that you may believe. For your sake. Now, I wonder, though, if there's a twinge there. Because sometimes when our vocations call us to do hard things, we can know in our heads all we want. That this is what's right, and this is what needs to happen. And even though it's going to be painful, it's, it's, we are heading in the right direction. I wonder if Jesus is carrying some of that with him. So as he comes to Bethany, the sister Martha comes out and uh, asks Jesus some hard, hard questions. And Jesus says, your brother will rise again. And she says, I know that he will rise again in the resurrection at the last day. And Jesus says, I am the resurrection and the life. Those who believe in me, even though they die, will live, and everyone who lives and believes in me will never die. Do you believe this? Yes, Lord, I believe that you are the Messiah, the Son of God, the one coming into the world. Martha goes and gets Mary, and Mary comes back and asks basically the same question. Um, Mary gets up quickly, and the crowd, those mourners who have come from all around to mourn with Mary and Martha over Lazarus' death, they think she's going out to the tomb, and so they come with her. And so when Mary comes where Jesus is and sees him, she kneels at his feet and said, Lord, if you had been here, my brother would not have died. Can't tell you how many times 
um, I've had to hear that same crying, mournful, angry pain from people who said, who, who say, if God had only done something, my loved one would not have died. So Jesus, who knows he has a job to do, who knows he has a mission, I think he's already starting to feel it. Because when Jesus saw her weeping and the Jews who came with her also weeping, he was greatly disturbed in spirit and deeply moved. That word for deeply moved is all stirred up. And I don't know, I don't know if you all have done that. You know, you know you're going into a hard situation. You're ready for it mentally. But once you get there, it's like everything inside of you gets all stirred up. You... Ah, it's awful. And not only that, the, the word before that, where he's deeply, um, deeply moved, where he's greatly disturbed in spirit, that, that even, even brings it deeper because that, that, that word has this, this hint, this connotation of, of indignation and a little bit of rage. So Jesus knows what he has to do. He sees the grief. He empathizes with that grief. He descends into that grief with the people who are grieving. He is stirred up inside, and there's a bit of him that's really upset that this is the way it had to be. Really upset at death, claiming one more victim. Really upset. He said, where have you laid him? They said to him, Lord, come and see. Jesus began to weep. How many of you have wept? Your eyes get puffy. Your throat constricts. Snot runs out of your nose. I think this is really important for us. This is really important because Jesus, the eternal son of God, who had every right to hold himself away from our suffering and pain, he chooses not to. So when he goes to the tomb here, I think I often expect Jesus to be the one who is fine the one who is happy, the one who has light in his face when everyone else is grieving. But we have to imagine Jesus over this next little bit going down to the tomb with puffy red eyes and snot all in his beard. A difficult to get the words out, choking as he does this work. So the Jews said, see how he loved him. But some of them said, could not he who opened the eyes of the blind man have kept this man from dying? Yes, of course, they think so. It's true. Then Jesus, again greatly disturbed, on edge, a little bit angry, comes to the tomb. It was a cave, and a stone was lying against it. Jesus says, take away the stone. Martha, the sister of the dead man, said to him, Lord, already there is a stench because he's been dead four days. They're willing to believe Jesus. They're, they're willing to say, yes, you are the resurrection and the life, and I know that you're the son of man who's coming into the world, but a little thing like decay seems like too much at this point. Jesus said to her, choking, did I not tell you that if you believed, you would see the glory of God? So they took away the stone. And Jesus looked upward and said, Father, I thank you for having heard me. I knew that you always hear me, but I have said this for the sake of the crowd standing here, so that they may believe that you sent me. When he had said this, he's going to cry in a loud voice, he has to clear his throat. He says, Lazarus, come out. The stone's been rolled away. Everyone's expecting the smell to start rolling out of the tomb at any moment. And Jesus says, Lazarus, come out. Can you imagine the dead silence? 
I wonder if the birds stop singing. What is going to happen? And the dead man came out, his hands and feet bound with strips of cloth, and his face wrapped in a cloth. Jesus said to them, unbind him and let him go. The story goes on to say outside of our reading that many of the people who were there believed in Jesus and that some then went to the Pharisees and told them what he had done. And the Pharisees get so concerned that if too many people believe in Jesus and the Romans are going to come and destroy Jerusalem and destroy the temple. And the high priest Caiaphas says it's better for one person to die on behalf of the whole so that the whole nation doesn't die. And at that point, the scripture says Caiaphas prophesies that Jesus will die on behalf of of the nation. On a day like the Sunday after All Saints, we remember those who have gone. We might have been in those places like Mary and Martha where we ask why, if you'd only had been here, it wouldn't have had to have happened this way. The thing about the Bible and especially about Jesus, is that question of evil, why bad things happen to good people, all of those things, it's not a question that the Bible's really interested in answering. The harder answer, the harder way the Bible and God and Jesus talk to us about these things is they don't answer the question, just like God never really answers Job's questions, but Jesus doesn't keep himself out of it either. You know, if we were given a reason for why bad things happen, I'm not sure it would actually satisfy us. We would still grieve. We would still weep. But what we know is that we have a God who in Jesus Christ weeps with us who goes down to the tomb in mourning with us, who promises that at the end of all things, he will set things right if we will only believe. He will raise the living and the dead, and all will be one as he and the Father are one. There's also a little reminder here, too. We say at Holy Spirit that Jesus has called us by name to become and share the good news of Jesus Christ. That he's not only called Holy Spirit Episcopal Church by name to do these things, but he's called each of us by name. It's easy to think of being called by name as sitting at your desk and someone calling your name and you going out and doing something fun. What this passage reminds us of what all the saints before us have learned is that when Jesus calls us by name, we're not just doing normal life waiting for Jesus to call. We are dead in a tomb. We are bound, lifeless. And when Jesus calls us, he calls us from death to life. We we scuttle out of the tomb with those grave clothes on, and Jesus says to the people around us, unbind him. Unbind her. Let them go. Jesus has come to bring life and to bring it abundantly. He has come to do battle with death, and in his cross and resurrection, he has conquered it. And when he calls us by name out of the tomb of our lives, he calls us to live that everlasting life, that resurrection life right now. So sisters and brothers, Saints of God, I invite you now to join me as we renew our baptismal covenant, as we remind ourselves who we are and who we've been woken up from the dead to be, and then to come together to the table of the Lord, to eat with those who have gone on before and to be sent out into this world to love and serve it In Jesus' name. In the name of God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Amen.
as you're able, would you please stand? We continue on page six with the baptismal covenant. The baptismal covenant is part of our baptism service, and everyone who is baptized either uh, uh, enters into this covenant or um, has their sponsors make these promises for them. Um, And part of this, and that's why at confirmation, you take those promises on for yourself. But four times a year, we try to renew these vows. So as we renew the vows, I'm going to walk to the back. After we have finished renewing the vows, I'm going to walk to the front and I'm going to get you wet with baptismal water as a reminder that we come into the presence of God by by being united with Christ in his death and resurrection through holy baptism. Do you believe in God the Father? Do you believe in Jesus Christ, the Son of God? I believe in Jesus Christ, his only Do you believe in God, the Holy Spirit? I believe Will you continue in the apostles' teaching and fellowship, in the breaking of bread and in the prayers? I will, Will you persevere in resisting evil? And whenever you fall into sin, repent and return to the Lord. Will you proclaim by word and example the good news of God in Christ? Will you seek and serve Christ in all persons, loving your neighbor as yourself? Will you strive for justice and peace among all people and respect the dignity of every human being? And now receive the water of baptism as a sign and symbol of the renewal of your vows. We've got enough over there. (laughs) This is the most fun part of my job. Did I make it? very close. (laughs) (laughs) Okay, Mary, here we go. Are you ready for this? As we are able, we remain standing or kneel as we are able for the prayers of the people on page 8. Let us pray to the Lord who has conquered death. Jesus, bread from heaven, you satisfy the hunger with good things. Grant us a share with all the faithful departed in the banquet of your kingdom. Hear us, risen Lord, our resurrection and our life. Jesus, the light of the world, you gave the man born blind the gift of sight. Open the eye of faith and bring us from darkness to your eternal light and glory. Hear us, risen Lord, our resurrection and our life. 
Jesus, son of the living God, you summoned your friend Lazarus from death to life. Raise us at the last to full and eternal life with you. Hear us, risen Lord, our resurrection and our life. Jesus, crucified Savior, in your dying, you entrusted each to the other, Mary, your mother, and John, your beloved disciple. Sustain and comfort all who mourn. Hear us, risen Lord, our resurrection and our life. Jesus, our way and truth and life, you drew your disciple Thomas from doubt to faith. Reveal the resurrection faith to the doubting and the lost. Hear us, risen Lord, our resurrection and our life. For the special needs and concerns of this congregation, for Donna, Easton, DJ, Jan, Theron, Tyson, Charlotte, Michael, Destiny, Brian, Karen, Ann, Carol, Vivian and Gary, Kay, Mimi, Michael, Donna, Laura, Ann, Larry, Megan, Leonard and Wanda, Cecilia and Rick, Parker, Ann, Olivia and family, Christy, Lauren, Tom, <coughs> Carolyn, Tom and Karen, Grace, Russ, Robert, Shell and Karen, Chuck and Carla, Doug, Brenda, Laurie, the Attaway family, the Parthic family, the women of the Dr. Lane Murray unit, the doctors, nurses, and all caregivers of COVID-19 patients. Hear us, Lord, for your mercy is great. We thank you, Lord, for the blessings of this life. We give thanks to all who celebrate their birthday this week, especially Lindsay, Sally, Steve, and Don. We give thanks to all who celebrate the anniversary of their wedding covenant this week, especially Jimmy and Melody. May God in his infinite love and mercy bring the whole church, living and departed in the Lord Jesus, to a joyful resurrection and the fulfillment of his eternal kingdom. Amen. As you are able, would you please stand? The peace of the Lord be always with you. Good morning again. Good morning. Would you please be seated? Um, and while you're being seated, would you please pull out the inserts in your bulletin? The first thing that we're going to look at is the opportunity card. If you're visiting with us, this is a great way to get connected. It's also a way to get connected for everyone who's here. So if you look on the back, um, you can see if you want more information about any of the things in the right-hand box, you can check that and put that in. If uh, you're remembering something that you need to tell me, <laughs> right now and you're not sure you can remember to send me an email later, the notes section is a good place for that. If you'd like to add somebody to the prayer list, our Sunday prayer list, you can do so um, there as well. Um, my next step today is to, if you'd like to spend some time this week reflecting on the ways that Jesus has unbound you and set you free, you could check that. Um, I also, uh, not in here, uh, but there are two collection boxes out in the narthex here. Um, one is gifts for grannies, right? Yes? Yes? From Friends for Life. Uh, Joyce, uh, uh, 
Joyce Stokes, longtime member here, is a very involved volunteer over at Friends for Life, which is just around the corner. I think the box has instructions on the kinds of things you're looking for, right? We're also collecting yarn right now for our knitters. It's starting to get cold outside, and one of the things our knitters do uh, is knit caps and scarves for um, people experiencing homelessness in Waco. Um, so I invite you, if you have some leftover yarn or if you just wanna go to the store and grab some, there's also a bar box out there next to the Friends for Life box where you can help our knitters help our community. If uh, you'd like to join us for adult formation this morning, I invite you down the hallway this way. We're having uh, a lectionary Bible study on some uh, one or two of the texts that we talk about this morning. Uh, you'd be very welcome to join us. And the, the final thing that you have in your bulletin um, next to the ne necrology list that we'll read after the Eucharist is, the, is our business reply envelope. You can use this to give your offering today if you'd like to um, write, write your information down and drop it in the offering plate or you can drop it in the basket by the door on your way out. You can also take it home because it, it is a no postage necessary envelope. I'm assuming that you're not going to mail it from outside the United States, so you should be good. If you're watching online or if you'd like, if you prefer to give online, you can give one time or set up recurring gifts at holyspiritwaco.com slash give. So the offering that we're about to receive is given to the glory of God and thanksgiving for trunk or treat last week. Um, we had a good number of volunteers. We had 126 cars come through the line over the course of those two hours. A great many of those cars had children in them that did not look old enough or able enough to participate in a traditional uh, trick-or-treating time. So we were able to, to serve some underserved families in our community. And with the extra candy we had, that, a lot of that went out to Colcord uh, Avenue, where Matt and Charity Anderson were holding court at what was apparently the biggest Colcord trick-or-treat of all time. Um, they said they would have run out of candy at 6.30 um, otherwise. And each of the bags of candy had a little invitation to Holy Spirit. So apparently somebody said, um, oh, do you go to this church? And they said, yes. And they said, well, we've been watching online. <laughs> if you're watching online, it would be wonderful if you reached out. I would love to make this connection. That's super fun. Um, and we've also sent big bags of candy uh, to Providence Hospital, Hillcrest. And where's the third place, Sherry? nursing homes around the community. Great, thank you. So for everyone who was there on Sunday to help with the cars, for everyone who came on Saturday to help stuff all of these things, getting ready for Trunk or Treat, um, I'm really, really grateful. Let us bless the Lord. Walk in love as Christ loved us and gave himself for us, an offering and sacrifice to God.
The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is truly right to glorify you, Father, and to give you thanks. For you alone are God, living and true, dwelling in light inaccessible from before time and forever. Fountain of life and source of all goodness, you made all things and fill them with your blessing. You created them to rejoice in the splendor of your radiance. Countless throngs of angels stand before you to serve you night and day. And beholding the glory of your presence, they offer you unceasing praise, joining with them and giving voice to every creature under heaven. We acclaim you and glorify your name as we sing. We acclaim you, Holy Lord, glorious in power. Your mighty works reveal your wisdom and love. You formed us in your own image, giving the whole world into our care, so that in obedience to you, our creator, we might rule and serve all your creatures. When our disobedience took us far from you, you did not abandon us to the power of death. In your mercy, you came to our help so that in seeking you, we might find you. Again and again, you called us into covenant with you, and through the prophets, you taught us to hope for salvation. Father, you loved the world so much that in the fullness of time, you sent your only Son to be our Savior, incarnate by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary. He lived as one of us, yet without sin. To the poor, he proclaimed the good news of salvation, to prisoners, freedom, to the sorrowful, joy. To fulfill your purpose, he gave himself up to death, and rising from the grave, destroyed death, and made the whole creation new. And that we might live no longer for ourselves, but for him who died and rose for us, he sent the Holy Spirit his own first gift for those who believe to complete his work in the world and to bring to fulfillment the sanctification of all. When the hour had come for him to be glorified by you, his heavenly Father, having loved his own who were in the world, he loved them to the end. At supper with them, he took bread. And when he had given thanks to you, he broke it, and gave it to his disciples and said, Take, eat. This is my body, which is given for you. Do this for the remembrance of me. After supper, he took the cup of wine. And when he had given thanks, he gave it to them and said, Drink this, all of you. This is my blood of the new covenant, which is shed for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Whenever you drink it, do this for the remembrance of me.
Father, we now celebrate this memorial of our redemption, recalling Christ's death and his descent among the dead, proclaiming his resurrection and ascension to your right hand, awaiting his coming in glory and offering to you from the gifts you have given us this bread and this cup. We praise you and we bless you. We praise you, we bless you, we give thanks to you, and we pray to you, Lord our God. Lord, we pray that in your goodness and mercy, your Holy Spirit may descend upon us and upon these gifts, sanctifying them and showing them to be holy gifts for your holy people, the bread of life and the cup of salvation, the body and blood of your Son, Jesus Christ. Grant that all who share this bread and cup may become one body and one spirit, a living sacrifice in Christ to the praise of your name. Remember, Lord, your one holy, Catholic, and apostolic church, redeemed by the blood of your Christ. Reveal its unity, guard its faith, and preserve it in peace and grant that we may find our inheritance with the Blessed Virgin Mary, with patriarchs, matriarchs, prophets, apostles, and martyrs, and all the saints who have found favor with you in ages past. We praise you in union with them and give you glory through your Son, Jesus Christ, our Lord. Through Christ, and with Christ, and in Christ, all honor and glory are yours, almighty God and Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit. Amen. And now, as our Savior Christ has taught us, we are bold to say, our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. Alleluia. Christ, our Passover, is sacrificed for us. The gifts of God for the people of God. Take them in remembrance that Christ died for you and feed on him in your hearts by faith with thanksgiving.
Let us pray. Eternal God, Heavenly Father, you have graciously accepted us as living members of your Son, our Savior, Jesus Christ, and you have fed us with spiritual food in the sacrament of his body and blood. Send us now into the world in peace and grant us strength and courage to love and serve you with gladness and singleness of heart. Uh, for Christ our Lord. Amen. Returning to the commemoration of the faithful departed on page 17, I invite you to stand or kneel. You are worthy, our Lord and God, to receive glory and honor and power. You are worthy, O Lamb, for you were slain, and by your blood you ransomed for God saints from every tribe and language and nation. We remember especially Anne, David, Alton, Lola, Vernon, Baby Brooke, Baby Herper, Linda, E.L., Wynette, Oma, Virgil, Harold, Harry, Louise, Lurleen, Harold, Margaret, Paul, Tiffany, Leroy, Mitch, Frank, June, Lee May, Ida, Joanne, Garrett, Wilma, Jackson, Thomas, Chappie, Jim, Pat, Emily, Jennifer Ruth, Oscar, Selma, Elaine, 
John, Donna, Jeanette, Tina, Dorothy, Martin, Nathaniel, Jay Gardner, Mar Marlis, Maria, Eddie, John, Gaylord, Tim, Earl, Angel, Ed, Jane, Tiffany, Alita, Joseph, Judy, Lillian, Kyle, Libby, Grover, David, Dorothy, Ronnie, Pat, Martha, Alan, Lyle, Roger, Vivian, John, Betty, Ashley, Ford, Hortense, Amber, Randall, Wilma, Jose, Lily, Pat, Grace, Reese, Tommy, Clint, Gladys, Scott, Carol, Alpha, Roger, Joan, Carol, George, and Fern. Continuing in our liturgy, this is the will of him that sent me, that I should lose nothing of all that he has given me, and I will raise them up at the last day. Lord God, creator of all, you have made us creatures of this earth, but have almost pro also promised us a share in life eternal. According to your promises, may all who have died in the peace of Christ come with your saints to the joys of your kingdom, where there will be neither sorrow nor pain, but life everlasting. Alleluia. Amen. Grant to us, Lord God, to trust you not for ourselves alone, but for those also whom we love and who, who are hidden from us by the shadow of death, that as we believe your power to have raised our Lord Jesus Christ from the dead, so may we trust your love to give eternal life to all who believe in him. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord, who is alive and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Amen. And now receive the blessing of God for the good work that he has prepared in advance for you to do. God the Father, by whose love Christ was raised from the dead, open to you who believe the gates of everlasting life. Amen. God the Son, who in bursting the grave was won, has won a glorious victory, give you joy as you share the Easter faith. Amen. God the Holy Spirit, whom the risen Lord breathed into his disciples, empower you and fill you with Christ's peace. And the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit be among you and remain with you always. Amen.
Go in peace to love and serve the Lord. Alleluia, alleluia.